Today we will perform a dynamic analysis using hypermesh and radios. We will simulate a multiple bird strike scenario in which a high velocity impact occurs between three different birds and an aircraft windshield assembly during takeoff or landing conditions. The smooth particle hydrodynamics or SPH method will be implemented to perform this analysis. Let's take a look at how this is done. The link for the CAD model used in this video is provided in the description. Feel free to download the CAD and follow this video step by step to get a clear understanding of the overall setup process. The first step is to assign a material and property to all the components in the model. We will use different materials formulations to create elastoplastic, brittle and soft materials as required. Once the geometry is imported in Hypermesh, four components are visible. The windshield, frame, body and bird. Select all the components and change the card image to part. Now enable the solver browser from the view panel. We will use the solver browser to set up this analysis. Now right click, create, mat, law 27. Provide a name for this material. We will use the unit system Newton, Millimeter, Ton and Second throughout the setup process for this analysis. MATLAW 27 is used to define a brittle material. We will enter the mechanical properties of high strength glass which is used to manufacture aircraft windshields. Create MAT Law 2 Plus Johns. Enter a name for this material. Let's enter the default mechanical properties of steel. Switch the I flag option to 1. We will enter yield and ultimate tensile strength values as 600 and 750 MPa respectively. Let's duplicate the law 2 material and change the name. Now enter the mechanical properties of aluminum. Change the yield and ultimate tensile strength values to 450 and 550 MPa respectively. The bird will be modeled using a very soft material. For this, we will use mat loss 6. Switch the loss 6 key to hydro. We will use density value similar to that of water. Set P minimum to minus 1 E minus 4. Change the EOS option input to polynomial and enter value of C1 as 2.24. Enter row 0 as 1 E minus 9. All the materials are now properly defined. Let's start creating the property cards. Create prop shell. Set I shell to 24. Value of N is 5. Enter thickness value as 20 mm. Switch I thick and I plus options to 1. Duplicate this property for a different thickness value. Change the thickness to 5 mm. Again duplicate this property. Now enter value of thickness as 2.5 mm. Now we will assign material and property to all the parts in the model. For windshield, select the 20 mm property and set material as glass. For frame, we will use 5 mm thickness property and steel material. For body, select 2.5 mm property and enter material as aluminum. Lastly, for the bird, select the law 6 soft material. The bird property will be automatically created in the next step when we create SPH particles. Now we can start to mesh the components. The windshield assembly will be meshed using two dimensional shell elements. For the bird part, 
we will use sph particles after the meshing is complete we will also define some contacts to observe the interaction between the bird and the windshield assembly during the actual impact open the automesh tab from 2d panel we will use the by collector selection criteria to select all the surfaces in the first three components Enter element size value as 50 and create the mesh. Now we will create SPH particles for the bird. Open the SPH tab from 1D panel. Switch the selection box to surfaces and select all the surfaces in bird component using by collector selection criteria. Let's use pitch value of 20. Set the material density equal to what we specified in the bird material. With all other options as default, create the SPH mesh. By switching to wireframe mode, we can clearly visualize the SPH particles. Right click, create, enter, Type 7. Provide a name to this interface. Set slave entity selection to components and select the bird component. Set master selection to components and select the other three components as master entities. We will enter STFAC value as 1. Let's use minimum gap value as 0 0.001. Set INACTI to 6. We can review the created contact. The master surfaces are blue and slave nodes are red in color. The next step is to define the boundary conditions for the dynamic analysis. The windshield assembly will be fixed in space and the bird component will be provided an initial velocity of 180 km per hour. To extract specific outputs from the analysis, we will also create some output blocks for the contacts and the components in the model. Create GR node part. Enter a name for this set. Now select the bird component in selection box. We will create a node set to store the constraint nodes. Provide a name to this set. Switch the node selection type to free edges. Now we will select all the nodes along the aircraft body edge. These nodes will be fixed in space in the next step of the analysis setup. Now create boundary conditions BCS. Check the box next to all degrees of freedom. Select the node set in proper selection box. Create boundary conditions initial velocity. Enter VZ value as 50,000 mm per second. In the node set selection box, select the bird set. We can review the boundary conditions to check if our assignments are correct. Now we will create output blocks to extract specific results from the analysis. Create TH part. This block will output results for all the parts. Change the number of variables to 1. Right click on the TH 
and create another output block for interfaces. Select the contact interface to output contact force results. Set number of variables to 1. Now we will create the engine cards to specify the total run time for the analysis. These settings will also control the time frequency with which animation files are written out. Let's take a look at how these control cards can be created in the model. Create engine keywords engine run. We will run this analysis for 0 0.03 second. To specify result output frequency, create the engine T file. Enter time frequency value as 0 0.0003. Now create the engine anim DT card to specify animation file's frequency. Enter value of T frick as 0 0.0003. Let's create the anim element card. Check the boxes next to EPSP, energy, one masses, pressure and her glass to output these results for post processing. Similarly, create the anim vect card to output vector results. Check the boxes next to acceleration, quant, displacement, pquant and quant2. Lastly, we will create the engine mon card to switch on engine monitoring. Right click on ALE CFD SPH and add the ALE CFD SPH card to the model setup. We will use SPH GLO alpha value as 0 0.25. The analysis setup is now complete. Let's save the model in a separate folder. Make sure to use underscore in place of space while entering all file names to avoid any errors during the analysis run. Now open the radios tab from analysis panel. In options box, enter dash both space dash n thread space 6, where 6 is the number of cores to be used to run this analysis. You can change this number as per the hardware specifications available. Click on radios to launch the solver. The analysis run is complete and we will do the post processing of the results in Hyperview. In the load model option, select the first animation file from working directory. In the load results option, select the last animation file. Apply the results. We can see all the components in the graphics area. Note the ID of the bird component. Now create a new node set. In the entity selection box, use the by ID selection criteria to select all the nodes from the bird component. Let's set draw style to sphere and enter draw size as 7. We can also change the color of the set. Now open the contours panel. Select result type as 1 minus and set averaging method to simple. Select the windshield component. Apply the results. Using the animation speed and playback controls, play the animation. We can clearly see the impact of the SPH particles on the windshield. Similarly, we can view the results for any desired component in the assembly. Let's observe the specific energy plots. Now split the graphics area into two parts to view the energy graphs. 
In the second window, switch to Hypergraph 2D. Now select the T file from working directory. Select global variables, internal energy and kinetic energy, mag, apply the results. We can see the drop in kinetic energy and subsequent increase in internal energy of the system. A word of caution here, the setup process demonstrated in this video may not work for all versions of radios. In different versions of radios, different formulations are used for the SPH particles. If you face any errors while running this simulation, I suggest you to go through the user manual for the specific version of radios that you are using. And this is how we can perform a dynamic analysis using hypermesh and radios. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a thumbs up, it helps a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.